Oh, hey. I'm Larry. I'm Ziggy. And we're here at Design Science in Philadelphia, bringing awareness on World Parkinson's Day. We do a lot of usability studies here in order to help design medical products that make people's lives easier. You know, Parkinson's, or PD, it's a neurodegenerative disease that affects the brain. Didn't Muhammad Ali have Parkinson's disease? Yeah, that's right, and so did that one actor, uh, Michael J. Fox. No way. He has Parkinson's disease. He was actually diagnosed at the age of 30 with early onset PD. Most uh. people are diagnosed around the age of 60. Okay, so it seems like he had a normal career, a relatively normal life. Yeah, he's been acting in, uh, oh, he was in that one show. Oh, uh, Curb, Curb Your Enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Oh, yeah, uh, that's pretty, pretty, pretty good. That was pretty good, Larry. Thanks, man. So if Michael J. Fox had it at an early age, how many people are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease? That's a good question. About 60,000 Americans each year are diagnosed. Mm. Of course, there are thousands of cases that go undiagnosed as well. That's a lot of people. Does it affect men and women equally? Men are about one and a half times more likely to be diagnosed than women. You know, my uncle actually had Parkinson's, so that makes me wonder. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, we recently did a study here at Design Science with Parkinson's patients. We were looking at devices and to see how patients can use those devices to administer medication. You know, I think we've got one of those participants coming in today. I'm going to interview her and uh, let her share her story with oh, us. Oh, sweet. We're here at Design Science with Verna, who has Parkinson's, and I'm so appreciative that you came in today in order to talk to us about what it's like with Parkinson's. How did you first realize that you have Parkinson's? Told my sister, who's a nurse, she thought there was something neurologically wrong with me. And um, Parkinson's was one of the things that she thought. She's the one who took me to the doctor and forced me to, to find out I had it. What signs were there? It was very stiff. I stood all the time with my hands up in the air. I didn't realize it, but I had a daycare. It was very difficult to hold a baby and oh, feed them. It hurt. Physically hurt to hold, hold them down. That must be really difficult. I have twin daughters, and when they were born, I, I couldn't do that at all. I just sit on the floor with them and put them on the inside, inside of my legs and on the inside of my knees and feed them the, the bottles. So it sounds like a lot of the signs went undiagnosed for some time. Mm -hmm. When was it that you realized that you had Parkinson's? The second neurologist I saw, she asked a lot of questions and we finally came to this realization I'd had it since about 30 years. Oh, wow. I was 30 years old, so. 2013, I was 54 years old, so I had had it for like almost 24 years. How has it been coming to terms with the disease? The first thing the doctor said was, you to stop working. You can't do that anymore. Well, when you've been taking care of children for years, hmm. you, you can't just give that up. Children I had at that time, both their mothers were teachers. I said to them, I, I've been diagnosed with this, I have this. You must be stop working. I, I'm willing to say keep on working till June. Oh wow! They, they didn't think I was doing enough moving, moving for myself to be able to move with them. So, I see. So they found out, had already found another situation. Like two weeks later, I the shoe dropped. So a common myth is that Parkinson's is only a movement disorder. Are there other symptoms that you deal with that you could share? I lost my sense of smell. And I found out about that was I burned up. I'll try Christmas cookies. I lose my sense of taste at times. Like sometimes I have it. certain things I can taste very strong taste like garlic. garlic. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you can now eat food that tastes bad but is really good for you? You're not gonna give me to have liver. Oh yeah. Liver has that look to it. No, <laughs> liver looks like liver. What sort of studies have you come here to design science to do? Open things or tightening things. Um, I kind of lost my pincer move. Mm. And um, so that's very difficult. I have to use a jar opener for everything, even a cap like this. And those are some of the movements that are being evaluated here in usability studies at Design mm -hmm. Science? Yeah. They I had to screw something on. And I, it took three or four times before I finally got it on. I had still I'm saying this, mm -hmm. but my finger weren't doing that. So. So it sounds like there are lots of opportunities for more useful medical products in your life. It's neat to know that there's people out there working on it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in, Verna. We really appreciate that you shared your story with us today. Thank you for having me. Hey, Larry. I actually learned a lot from that interview. 
Thanks, Ziggy. I learned a good bit, too. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more, check out our website at dscience.com. Or, if you'd even like to participate in one of our studies, shoot us an email at ihaveavoice at dscience.com. Cheers. <laughs>